Hello. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, um, recorded a video. You might not have noticed. Um, I've pre-recorded three before Christmas. We're well into January now, and um, there's other videos that go out there as well, not, not just me, the team are doing them as well. So there's been plenty on the channel, but I actually haven't recorded one for over four weeks now. A bit of that was to give me a, a break over Christmas. I took some time off, hope you did too. And the other one was, I think I kind of, I did, I did one video just before Christmas where um, I showed you that we're moving house for a bit. I'm doing some work in my old house. I'm in my old house here and I think uh, I the curtains are up. But there's a great big hole where my kitchen used to be, so my excuse. Um, reason for showing you that now was a well, couple of things really. First of all, it's the reason I haven't done many videos. Uh, but it's also one of the um, reasons or one of the, something to tell you, something to let you know that that great big hole down there is our new YouTube studio. So we're very much committed to doing YouTube videos. We've tried it, um, we've more than tried it for the last uh, 18 months or so. It's working really well for us. We're very pleased with the, the, the feedback. Um, most important, I guess, is, is work, working really well for you guys. We're getting lots of comments, uh, lots of people coming to meet us. Uh, it's just really nice to see. Uh, so much so that we have turned off all you know, normal, in inverted commas, marketing. Uh, we're building a YouTube studio, that great big hole down there. That's what that's going to be for. And um, yeah, hit, hit subscribe, click the notifications because there's going to be lots and lots more videos coming through. It's going to be the mainstay of our uh, our communications. That's, that's We're going to be doing more and more of it. So we've been thinking about ways. Uh, we've got great big lists. And one of the things that came up was... Um, I like a diagram, you know, a, a, a whiteboard with a pen near it is, uh, yeah, th there's always one of those that are close at hand. Um, but actually, there never has been in front of a camera to be able to do it. So, um, just, well, why, Jess, why don't you draw some of those diagrams you're always drawing? And I think, well, I don't know where I'd do it, where, where, where I'd I, um, do those diagrams. Um, just looking around, I did a video quite a few years ago now, maybe two, two and a bit years ago. Actually, maybe more than one. I think I did two or three where I was in an old house, took out a Sharpie pen and uh, just started writing around and did that. So yeah, look, there's plenty of white walls. Um, so over the course of the next, I've, I've got a list of, I think it's about seven or eight, and I'm sure by the time it comes to, uh, you yeah, know, getting to the seventh one, there'll be more joining the list. Um, look, loads of white walls. So. I'll fill them all up. They're all going to be plastered over and decorated anyway. Uh, come on, let's give you another view of that uh, that YouTube studio. So that, that's my old lounge there. That great big hole. Well, that, that beam, that is that level there. When you used to walk off there, that, that was my kitchen. So that hole below it is the studio. And uh, there's still sort of the remnants of the kitchen down towards that end as well so a long way down right so yeah let's uh, let's get to um recording a video and i'll start i'll pick this one to start off with because uh it well i used to draw this little diagram all the time and um well i'll tell you what i'll get set up on the tripod i'll draw it over here and i'll show you what i mean right. so I used to draw this quite dry diet. So I used to draw this diagram quite often. Uh, let's see if I can remember it. Um, we're quite evangelical about buy to let maybe. Uh, we've got plaster on the office wall. We believe buy to let is the best wealth creation strategy on planet Earth. So um, quite often we had to justify that and say why. And I used to draw this and call it the ultimate business triangle. So three sides of the triangle to represent what the ultimate business needs. Um, I used to say that it was a, um, a Harvard Business School uh, end of year or end of uh, th um, degree paper, if that's what they call it in America, uh, thesis. And um, just before I recorded this video, I tried to find it and I, I recall this, it's been about 10 years. Um, and I know that I had a paper and it was you know, Harvard Business School, 1983 or something like that, I think. Uh, two people at Harvard had written this 
and they're entitled to the ultimate business. What does the ultimate business need? It only needs three things. And uh, can I find that now? So if anybody can find this, um, is it really a Harvard Business School um, uh, paper? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that I used to have that, but I can't find it anywhere on the entire World Wide Web. So if anybody can find it, drop a, uh, a note down in the link. Is it a Harvard Business School thing, the, the ultimate business triangle? Um, nonetheless, it's a great... Um, simple way of describing what the ultimate business needs. And it goes like this. So the ultimate business needs only, uh, see I bought Amazon Basics, not Sharpies, and they're clearly not as good. Triangle, just too tight. And on each side of the triangle, another one, is a bit better. Uh, something that the business needs. And the first one is customers. Uh, when it comes to property, well, I don't think the fad for living in houses is going to go away. Potentially, everyone is your customer. Everybody needs a house. Um, the number of people is going up. The number of people who rent is going up. And of those people, they're renting for longer. The average age of the first time buyer is going up and so on and so forth. So when it comes to keeping this side of the triangle right, I think that's pretty strong. Um, we invest in, um, in the main, 80% you know, of what, what we do is two and three bedroom houses for families to live in. And they're very, very stable. You know, they, they rent out very quickly um, to reliable tenants and they stay there for the long term. So, tick, tick, tick. The next that you need is profits. Yeah. So the ultimate business needs customers and it needs a profitable thing to do. Now, when it comes to property, um, capital growth is your main winner and it, and, and it might not always seem it, um, in the short term, maybe even sometimes in the medium term, but if you buy a property and hold it for long term, the longer you leave it, a 100,000 pound house becomes a 200,000 pound house. A 200,000 pound house becomes a 400,000 pound house and so on and so on. Um, various stats out there, but the ONS would say that property prices go up by roughly 7.4%, uh, I think it is, something like that off the top of my head. Now, a magic thing happens when property prices, or indeed any number doubles, sorry, goes up by 7.2%, I'll give the game away, didn't I? Um, and it's the number doubles every 10 years. So property prices, according to the ONS, go up about 7.4%. If a number only goes up by 7.2% year on year on year, within 10 years, it's roughly doubled. Now, of course, that doesn't always happen. Some, some eight-year periods go quicker than some 14-year periods, but roughly speaking, um, which highlights the fact that this is a long-term uh, thing. We, we get in and we stay as long as possible. My own personal exit strategy is death. So, you know, that tells you that. So, capital growth is one. Uh, the ability to rent out, it's important to choose high-yielding properties. Um, but yeah, in, in, income that way. And actually, when you think about that, and uh, this is kind of a, this is an alluding to another video. We've, we've got a little circle up here with a cross in it. When you start to think about where else you can work hard, save, invest, and then invest your capital in somewhere where the price of it, the value of it, the capital value of it goes up over the long term, you can rent it out, you can mortgage it. There's not many places in the world where you can put that. So in terms of profits, very stable um, uh, capital growth curve, you get an income, put the two things together, the total property return. There's not much better in the world where you can put that and you've got to get everything right. You know, I'm sure I'll get loads of comments saying, mm, uh, it, it, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. I've had a bad experience and, and whatnot. Which brings me on to my next point and kind of the reason for doing this now is the first video because I think um, all the other videos, I know all the other videos will start to expand on this as a theme because what else do you need in the ultimate business? If you've got Customers, lots of them becoming more, buying more, more often. Every single metric you think about on customers is going up. That's good. And what, we'll do another video on it, I believe is um, the best place to put your hard-earned savings to work uh, in terms of profits. If you've got everything, those two things, what's the third thing? What goes here? What is the third 
side to the ultimate business triangle. And the answer to that is, think about this situation. Money coming in, it's looking, looking rosy. Where do you want to be yourself? Where do you want to be sat? What do you want to be doing? And the answer is on the beach. You, know, you might not want to be on the beach. You might want to be sat on a building site, building your dream home, you know, whatever. Um, it's got to be easy. It's got to be easy. It's got to be scalable. It's got to be systemizable. Uh, and whenever I do a video on yeah, by to let is the best wealth creation strategy on planet Earth. You know, why I believe it's the ultimate business. Um, I'll always get comments on, yeah, but what about tenants? What about avoids? And don't you know about all the legislation? And uh, you've got to pay loads of tax and all these things. And um, that is the common um, misconception about you know, being a landlord and, uh, uh, and, and the life of a buy to let landlord. Done well, buy to let can be everything there you can be it's, it, it, it's systemizable it's scalable it's a beautiful way to make a living you can be sat on a beach scrolling through an iPod, iphone and, and, and checking your, your your emails um i'd say once a week but you know, less you know once every month two weeks maybe 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 you're checking them once a month in a, in a dedicated couple of hour period in the reports and taking less than a phone call a week it can get that systemized and scalable so all of the negatives all the bits here that's the work of a well-run buy-to-let property portfolio. That's the bit. We call it hassle. We say um, our, our aim as a business is to give landlords more money, less hassle, and their time back so they can sit on a beach. And the work, the bulk of that, yeah, money's money. You count it. Time, it's up to you whether you're going to use it and take it as a landlord. It's there. Yeah, you've got the money to do it and the hassle subsided. You've got to just take, take the time. The tricky bit, the work, is in how to reduce the hassle. And that's what we do. As ForTheLandlords.com, we work hard to give landlords more money, less hassle, so they get their time back. And it's the, the hassle bit that's the hard work. So I'm going to keep producing more and more videos. There's a lot of white spaces. It looks like I need some better pens. They're useless. Um, and there's at least, like I said, there's at least seven videos to do. So subscribe, click the notification, share this video in, uh, or, or the link to subscribe to your friends. If anybody's got even a passing interest in Bytelet, the next seven or eight videos that we do here are going to be uh, going to be interesting. Bye for now.